coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. This is one of those that everybody talks about. There's this old barn, and there's this beautiful car. Well, guess what? They do exist. Opinionated buddies, one with a Model T. I love hot rods. The other with a Model A. I don't like wires. Plus. Most people, you would tell them, Jeff, take some sandpaper to your headlights. Oh. <laughs> they might think you're a little crazy. We brighten things up in Under the Hood. Looking for a unique accessory? Yeah, that's real python snakeskin. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hi everybody, welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps, we're at a great place for a classic car show, Sonic Drive-In in Parma, Ohio. Sonic, America's Drive-In, where you have great food and people buzzing around on roller skates bringing you your food and hopefully not running into you when you're trying to talk on television. Sonic started in the early 1950s in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Now over 3,500 restaurants in 43 states and they love classic cars. Jimmy, it's great that you and your son are out enjoying a car that came from another guy named Jimmy McAdams. Yep, the first. The first. You're the third. Yep. Your dad's the second. Yep. Your son's the fourth. Yes, sir. Well, I love that, but I love your Ford Galaxy 500 even more, and I must admit I'm partial because Ford Galaxies have been in my family for a long time, and I drove this, one almost just like this one. This has been in my family since 71. My grandfather bought it brand new, and uh, about five years ago, gave it to me and my son, and here we are. And obviously that's the attraction of this car to you because you don't look like a four-door Ford kind of guy. <laughs> I did just turn 40 last week, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little older, but I've always loved the big old cars, always, so. What's the best attribute about this car? The history, you know, coming from my grandfather. That, to me, that's what the, the best part of it is. Jimmy, how long ago did he give it to you? How long? Five years. Five years ago. Five years ago. And what have you done to it? Um, fuel pump. Some carburetor work, and that's that's about it. That's it. That's it. And it's still running beautifully. As far as I know, it still has the original tires on it. Wow. The bias ply tires are a little squirrely, <laughs> but other than that, it's it, it runs pretty good. Uh, radials were made for a reason, weren't they? <laughs> I believe they were. <laughs> <laughs> now your grandfather is still with us. Yes, he's 91. He just turned 91 May 13th. And he drives a what? 2010 Mustang. You got a 91-year-old guy cruising around in a 2010 Mustang. Well, he had an 06 Mustang and says, I can't drive it anymore. Too old. And I thought, you Him? Know, you yeah. thought him? Yeah, when he was 90. He meant the car? The, the car was too old. It's an 06. <laughs> so he has a 2010. Oh, you Jimmy McAdams guys. I'll tell you, there's something about us. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, this is a, a very nicely redone car. Well, thank you. Didn't used to look like this. No, it did. What inspired you to do this to a Model T? I love hot rods. It started when I was a young kid. I was building cars before I even had a driver's license. Hot rodding them around the streets. How, how did this one come about, Matt? Where did you find this? What, the, what was the process in getting it? Well, I usually get the idea in my head first. And uh, I said, I want to build a sedan. And then I said I want to build a Model T sedan because everybody builds Model A sedans. Not a lot of guys hot rod the Model Ts. And I happen to like the Model T. So went on eBay and found the car was in uh, Philadelphia, PA, and picked it up and started from there. And when you picked this up, what did it look like? It was a complete original car. It looked like it, looked like it had been in uh, early put away. Somebody just parked it. Who knows how many years it sat. So it was in pretty good shape. The body was in excellent condition. Yeah, that's why I bought it. They're hard to find in this type of condition. Uh, a Model T purist would be very mad at you. If they you are. took a pretty, pretty legit They're Model T They're always mad at me, but it. as long as they don't take a swing at me, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, where do you start? Where, where do you take a regular old Model T and turn it into a hot rod? How do you start that whole thing? Well, you start by taking the car apart, sifting out what you need, what you don't need, and get, get your frame built, 
and start from there and start putting her back together with all new parts. The process took how long? Six months. Wow, you're fast. Yes. An original steel all the way around? Yeah, the body's all steel. The grill shell is fiberglass, that's a reproduction, but that's the only reproduction part on the body. And all this comes out of your head? Just yes, how you want to do it, how you want to make it up? Exactly. Well, that's, that's the great thing about these cars is that there's no rules. No one could come up to this car and point at something and say, that's wrong. When you build these cars, you build them exactly how you want to build them, and there's no rules. That's what I like the most about them. Tony, you're a guy who has a, a love for Model A's. I, I do. Why? I, my dad had these cars when I was growing up, and before I was even born, he had Model A's. He was in the Navy, and he bought Model A's, Model T's, and he ended up with a 31 Cabriolet Model A and a 25 Model T four-door sedan. And we've had those cars our whole childhood. My brother and I grew up in those cars. We went to Parma parades in those cars, and I still got both those cars. Wow. And this is in, from, the, from the early 60s. And so my dad got me in these cars. He's got a Model A. I've got more Model A's than this. So I, I really do. I love Model A's. They're just they're fun cars. It's just fun. What's the story of this one? And my dad told me my wife was going to go buy some shoes at Sears. And he goes, hey, why don't you go look at this car? And he was all against the, the street rod thing because my dad's like a purist. And I'm, I, I was like, why is he telling me about this street rod? So I'm like, okay. So I go over there. Well, those were, that was an expensive pair of shoes, but I was <laughs> worth it. My wife wanted a coupe with fenders. I wanted a coupe. I wanted a hot rod Model A. It worked out perfect. And then so I've, I've been working on it, just making it the way I want to make it. And, and this is how it came out. <laughs> so I, I'm still working on it with the doors and everything. So, and yeah, the body what, work. What's with the doors? I, come, my, come on, Tony. Uh, like I was telling you. Your buddy my, Matt told me to yeah, do that. Yeah, I'm a slacker for a body work. But <laughs> I'd rather do the mechanical work and the body work. I just, I don't know. I want to do it, but it's like I'm not in a big hurry. Plus, I, I'm, I sort of like the rat rod, so I'm like between both, you yeah. know? And I'm going to eventually get it done. What changes have you done to this car? I changed the complete drivetrain. This engine's a uh, crate motor 350 with 350 horse. I have a 700R4 overdrive built out of place out of Akron. Um, it's got an eight inch rear end with a traction lock. Uh, the radiator's brand, uh, different. It looks like a Model A radiator, but it's built for its Walker radiator, the, the high dollar ones. And I've done all its interior. I've took all the, I don't like wires. So I took all the wires. I tried to hide everything I could and just made it simple. Um, it had a heater core on it. It had air conditioning set up. Um, excuse me, I, I just took all that off. I just wanted the base bare bones looking street rod. And I know it's not a 32 like the American Graffiti, but that's sort of the look I was going for. Sometimes you are pleasantly surprised. He told me his uncle had bought it new, and I figured it was a typical Ohio car. It's not, and it's next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. RK Motors Charlotte wants your classic car. Let our consignment professionals take the aggravation out of the selling process for you. With an established international customer base, the RK Motors Charlotte consignment program has a 90% sell-through rate. Our top-notch marketing efforts have led to an average sale time of 87 days. We do the work. We do the marketing. We sell your classic for you at maximum value. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Roberto, I think one of the most unique, distinct Buicks ever made is the Buick Riviera. That, you, you know what that thing is the minute you take a, uh, take a look at it. Why did you want to have one? Uh, I seen one when I was eight years old and I fell in love with it. Uh, the back always reminded me like of a rocket and I never seen one ever again. And then I seen one 15 years ago and my childhood memories came back to me and I said I had to have it. Where'd you find this? Uh, out of Ravenna, Ohio. Uh, she was missing a door, missing an engine. Um, took a long time to put back together. Um, that's her current state right now. She's, it's never done, but it's a work in progress. Tell us about the paint job. Uh, well, the paint job is a candy tangerine. Um, it's got some gold flakes, and um, top layer is called uh, pearl flake. So it kind of changes color, depends on the sun and the uh, time of the day. 
So yeah, it's pretty wild right now. She looks like a copper color. When the sun hits it, it gets kind of vibrant. So yeah, real special. All right, now let, let's, let's cut to the chase here. What's with the whole snake deal? The whole snake deal. <laughs> well, it was kind of by accident. That's real python? <laughs> yeah, that's real python snakeskin. All through the interior? All through the interior, yeah. Leather and um, suede also. Roberto, that's pretty serious. Yeah, I'm serious about my car. <laughs> <laughs> I went with the theme and um, the name of my car is called Venom 71. So I went with the whole snakeskin theme. I, I like it, I'm happy the way it came out. And again, it was just, just the way it came out. Roberto, I must ask, how do you take care of python skin? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I got you, didn't I? I got you. <laughs> uh, not a lot of sunlight. Don't feed it after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you have to do to it? No, no, just a little, a uh, little bit of water. You know, not, not in the sun too much because it'll start turning green. But I haven't had any problems with it so far. Well, good luck with it. Thank you. And you come by the the car hobby honestly because your dad's Impala looks like it could do some serious damage with all those hydraulics. Definitely, definitely. Definitely. That's a nasty machine. Yes, yes it is. We've been doing it for a while, so yeah, it's the car bug we got. The hydraulics and the python, I love it. Thank you. Clay, Betty, this car drove into the lot. I knew it had to be in the show, and I didn't even know the story behind it when I thought that. That is a beautiful 58 Oldsmobile. Where in the world did you ever find a car like this? You want to take it on? No, I'll let you. Okay. I'll just fill in the gaps. Okay? I, I would... <laughs> I was up to a friend of mine's uh, repair shop and a gentleman came in and said he had inherited an Oldsmobile and asked him if they worked on him. He also asked uh, if he knew anybody who wanted to buy him. They called me and I came up to talk to him because they knew I collected Oldsmobiles. This is number? 19. 19, okay. And they're all Oldsmobiles? Except for, for the one. Ford Van. Okay, all right. Now that that's out of the way, continue, Clay. <laughs> <laughs> He told me his uncle had bought it new, and I figured it was a typical Ohio car. I told her I was going to look at the car, and she said, uh, don't you remember the agreement? We, no more cars. I said, no more cars, but I'm still going to go look. It doesn't cost anything to look. I went down and looked at the car, and I come home, and I told her how nice it was, and she said, uh, I told you no more cars. And I said, okay, no more cars. That lasted for about three or four days, and she said to me one night, she said, uh, how nice is that car? I said, it's gorgeous, huh? Well, maybe I better go look at it with you. I said, I'll make you a deal. If we look at it together and it's as nice as I say it is, we're going to buy it. She said, okay, you got a deal. We walked in an unheated garage and looked at it, and it took her about five seconds to give me the thumbs up. We negotiated a deal, and I bought it. Mileage on this car? Uh, when I bought it, it had uh, about 30500 It now has 32900 Original. 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 And this car is basically untouched. Basically untouched. The, ge the gentleman I got it uh, from was the nephew of the original owner. The story was he drove it back and forth to Florida the first couple of years, put about 10, 11,000 miles on it in two, three years, and then basically parked it and put the rest of it on from 59 until I bought it in 2009. Betty, for people who collect Oldsmobiles, you guys won the lottery. Oh, we won the lottery. This is, this is one of those that everybody talks about. There's this old barn. And there's this beautiful car. Well, guess what? They do exist. Clay, what have you done to the car? I basically had to go over all the mechanics on it. I bought it. It wasn't running. Uh, the top radiator hose needed to be replaced. And so basically what we did was I rebuilt the brakes. I did the master cylinder. Uh, I used the old brake shoes in the back. I collect 57 Olds, and the nice part about it was 90% of the uh, parts I had in the basement that I'd already collected for the 57 because the underpinnings on the 58 are basically just like a 57. So mechanical, you did. Body, interior, this was it. This was it. I don't know it. if you took a look at the headliner inside. That is original. It is so fragile that if you blow on it, it starts crumbling. But nobody repops those. So we're just praying that it doesn't fall completely apart. Betty, next time Clay comes home and says, oh, it looked really nice. It depends on how well he says it. <laughs> There's a certain tone to his voice when he's really, really interested. Well, congratulations on your winning lottery ticket. Thank you very, very Thank much. Thank you. It always helps to see where you're going. So now for the most part, 
All the big scratches, the yellowness is gone. Under the Hood is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. World-class collector vehicles. That's what RK Motors Charlotte is all about. The finest in classic, muscle, and high-performance automobiles. The design and excellence of the 1930s and 40s. The chrome of the 1950s. The muscle of the 1960s and 70s, and much more. RK Motors is the one-stop shop to sell your car, add a new prize to your collection, or restore an old friend to past glory. Learn more about RK Motors Charlotte at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Mike Velick, the restoration manager here at RK Motors Restoration. This isn't a classic car, Mike, but oh, I love the trick you're going to tell us. Absolutely. This may not be a classic, but being into classics, usually you take care of your daily commuter also. Sure. And one of the problems we have with these more modern cars is the foggy plastic headlights that over time either turn yellow or get the sandblast abuse from road debris. So I have a couple little steps that you can take to actually brighten them back up and get your full light back on the road. First off, bucket of water, a little bit of dishwashing detergent, car soap, whatever you want to do, just to give you a little, little bit of soap helps the paper glide. Now the steps I'm going to be going through is I've got a 1,000 grit, 1,500 grit, and 2,000 grit paper. Real simple, soak them in the bucket, get them nice and soft. Now to avoid scratching up your paint job, it's always nice and handy to tape around the area that you're going to be working on. Who knew masking tape was so critical with cars? Yeah, absolutely. So there we are. We're pretty well protected. What I'll do to show you the difference is, I'm gonna do half the light and leave half the light the way it was. Maybe we'll be able to see a pretty decent difference. Nice idea. No real major technique here. I'm just kinda, you just, know, sanding. Just rubbing it down. Yeah, sanding the surface. The paper will start to glide a little easier across it. Okay. That's when you know that you've taken a lot, out a lot of the pits. Okay. And you'll see it start to turn white, and you'll, you'll get that yellow film. The majority of the heavy scratches are smoothed out. Okay. I don't have that yellow haze anymore. You see the difference how it's got the yellow haze. Mm -hmm. This is all white and foggy now. Yep. Okay, well, we're gonna go on to the next step. Now we're gonna go to the 15. Okay. And all this is is taking and putting a little finer scratch in it than the thousand did. Most people you would tell them, Jeff, take some sandpaper to your headlights. Oh. <laughs> they might think you're a little crazy, but sometimes it's necessary. 2000 grit is actually getting so smooth it's almost going to start to come back to a shine. And then after the 2000 is complete, we can start buffing. Okay. And on some of these cars nowadays too, Jeff, they're so easy to take these lights out. Sometimes it's a matter of two little push clips, pull them up, unplug the lights, and you can do it on your workbench at home. You can avoid going this far. So now for the most part, all the big scratches, the yellowness is gone. Yep. Now it's just kind of a foggy, dull lens. So this is a uh, pneumatic buffer. I usually make my own little smaller pads out of uh, a bigger pad for buffing paint. But they sell little three inch pads and everything. You can get them in different grits. This is the most aggressive grit and we'll finish up with a real fine grit. Okay. We're gonna go through three different kind of compounds that you can get through 3M. You've got your, uh, it's, it's a three step process. Same process I use for polishing cars out, I use for this. It works on our clear coat finishes. Pretty much that's what we're doing here. We're just polishing a clear piece of plastic. Okay. We just get a little amount on there. This is much more fog than that. Clear, gonna give me a much nicer light on the road. And it didn't take long to do it. It didn't Mike. take that long. Not only does it look better, but you're gonna, you're gonna maybe see that deer a little sooner before it jumps out in front of you and takes out your baby too. 
Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Automotive passion runs deep at RK Motors Restoration. Our master body paint and mechanical technicians have decades of award-winning experience restoring some of the world's finest collector cars. Flawless paint and bodywork, highly accurate interiors, engines that run better than new. Each restoration is completely documented and finished to award-winning Concours quality specifications. From project car to automotive perfection, visit rkmotorscharlotte.com to make it happen. Now back to Sonic Drive-In on Cruisin, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. John, Jerry, you guys are old buddies from the high school days, re reunited through classic cars. Classic cars, yeah. 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 How'd you run into each other again? At a car show. At a car show, yeah. yeah. You know, and I was driving a Nova and you were driving a... Malibu. Malibu. Yeah. We just yeah. regained our, or rekindled our friendship. And here you sit tonight. What high school? Rhodes. Rhodes. James Lowe Rhodes. Yeah. So, John, you're a Chevy guy. Yes. So why is a Ford Mustang sitting behind you looking so good? Uh, the guys I run around with all have Mustangs. I own the 72 Nova. They said if they find a Mustang and I buy it, they'll help me build it. I couldn't go wrong. I bought a Mustang, and we took a year building the car. So. As a Chevy guy, what have you thought about the Mustang? I like it a lot. It's it's a lot of looks, it's a lot of fun, uh, and so is my Nova. When you look at Jerry Chevelle, do you think, yeah, that's, that's the Chevy I'd like? Or are, you, or are you pleased with the Mustang? I'm pleased with the Mustang. I mean, yeah, yes. You know. <laughs> Why'd you get a, uh, a Super Sport? Well, I had one in 69, oh. and I thought, well, you know, and I put this one together the same way my 69 was, bench seat, four speed, you know. It was the original four-speed car anyway, but I put bench seat in it, you know. Where did you find the car? I found it on Pearl Road in uh, Cleveland. Well, I drove by it, you know, and I kept thinking, well, maybe I will go back and look because on the windshield it said real SS, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, had a 307 in it or 305 with a power glide trans and, you know. <laughs> Everything out of a 68 car. The guy had a 68 four-door and he wanted to drive a two-door car and that's how it ended up. And, but I traced all the numbers and everything before I bought it to make sure it was what I was looking for. How long did your whole restoration take? Uh, a good five, and about five years, yeah. Because I took it apart in 02 and drove it in 07, yeah. Well, your car looks nice especially for a Ford guy. Thank you. John's car looks nice, especially for a Chevy guy. <laughs> You've each had them about 10 years, your high school buddies. Yeah. Strange stories, fellas. Strange stories, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Okay, now we'll get out there and tear them up. <laughs> I used to live in the state of Texas for five years. Sonics are everywhere throughout Texas. Over the years, they've kind of migrated north of the Mason-Dixon line, so now folks all around the country enjoying the food of Sonic and, of course, the classic cars that come out to enjoy Sonic drive-ins all across America. That'll do it for this edition of Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time, everybody, right here on Cruise In.